Hi everyone and welcome back and welcome to my another video. This is episode 6 and in this video we are going to talk about Prisma with Nest.js. That is little bit different. So we have already covered about Prisma with MongoDB, Express app, Prisma with, uh, uh, Prisma with Postgres, Express app. Now we are just changing the Node.js framework. Earlier we were talking about Express. Now instead of Express we are talking about Nest.js framework. Okay. So things are going to be the same from the Prisma API, like the Prisma migrations, Prisma generate, uh, Prisma migrate, and then the Prisma APIs, like you wanted to insert, update, delete, find, all these different APIs. The only thing is we are going to just write a couple of few more modules, like the Prisma module we are going to write in the Nest.js. So this is the basic folder structure for Nest.js app. I'm not going to, into the details like this is a CLI generated app and here we can see the Prisma. Prisma client is there and rest all are like we are going to write a user APIs, blog post kind of uh, APIs. So for that I have just added the dependencies. Okay, now what we need to do is we already have Postgres running that we just need to make sure. We already have a docker compose file. And I will just delete the MongoDB temporarily. Then I will say docker compose up. That will give me the Postgres container. That's what I want. Okay. Yeah. Now moving to the code. Code structure is similar. The nest JS app. Now, if we look into SRC, we are going to create a Prisma module and this is the Prisma inside a root folder. Here we are going to add a Prisma schema file. Okay, and all the migrations will go inside this folder. Here we can create our root module. Currently it's app module, main.ts is looking for app module. And inside app module, we, will to, we are going to define a lot of new things. Right, the user modules, blog post modules and all. So first of all, we will create a Prisma folder here and we are going to create a Prisma module. Like our, like in the typo RMs, we always create uh, entities and entities uh, indirectly provides us the repositories to access the database tables. Here, it's a little bit different, right? We are using the Prisma client, right? So we have to just write a Prisma module and the Prisma service to access the Prisma client which we are going to generate through, through the Prisma generate command. Okay, I mean there are different ways of doing it. Either you can create a Prisma schema file first. Schema.prisma file we can generate and that will contains uh, the schema. Okay, what is the, the database? What are the typings? All those things we are going to have. So schema.prisma file and inside this we can define the data source that is the first thing and then all our models like we are going to have model user then model post all those uh, let's say what we are going to do is let's define quickly all the models model user here we are going to have id which is integer Default auto incremented. And what else we have? Email, which is a five string. We can just add a unique name is a string. Password is a string. Okay, then we have address, which is pointing to another collection another table address and here we can have relations and we'll map these fields address id address id here to references id okay so there will be addresses we are going to create And this is the primary key for entry relationship and address ID. Here address ID will be of type integer. 
and then we have another thing is the posts which will be of type post array okay now here we can define the address model model address and inside address what all attributes we have that we will define here so inside address address schema it will be just like okay id name state country street something like that state city state or country should be good okay now we have the post post is also another schema uh, another schema model which we need to define here I can add it here model post that will have ID order incremented. Okay, what else we are going to define here? It is complaining addresses. Okay, now inside post we have a auto incremented ID title. content and here we are going to have a relationship with user so let's say this is the post i will define author author has a relationship with the user and here relations here i will pass fields which is okay let's call it as the author id here and it will be have a references with the id an author ID is of type integer in the same table. Author ID is integer. And now the last column. Uh, let's fix these things. What is missing here? Format with the same error propagated everywhere. Okay everything is looks good there is an address there is a post post has an author and then there is address id address has a now if you look into the address schema that contains the user object this will be user object because a single user has can have multiple address or a single address it is just a string okay so three schema models we have and our Provider is a post disk SQL. So we already have a container up and running. We just define the models user, post, and address. We can also have a category that is about the post. Okay, what all categories a post can have. So inside post, we can just add category. Okay, and then we just need to create the category model so inside categories we are going to define the category that is uh, let's define it here model category and inside this you will have okay the id which is same and couple of columns id and then we have a name name of the category let's say the technical blog technical post non technical post or something like that and it has a posts that's it so this is this defines all different kind of relationship we have so here you can see the post and category is many to many because one category can belongs to multiple post and single post can belongs to multiple category okay and rest all is like okay there is a user user will have an address user will have a multiple post a user single user can write multiple posts so that is a post array and single post will belongs to a single user only so there is a one to many relationship here is a many to many relationship and one to many relationship between user and address okay so now npm install is done we have everything ready now what we can do is we can just generate execute these commands npm run migrate and in the package.json we have this migrate script which is doing prisma migrate dev okay that should be able to run the migration and then we will execute npm run generate 
to generate the Prisma client. Okay, so it is doing the Prisma migrate, and after that, it may ask about the name. Okay, so I will say initial migration. It will just check the the schema dot Prisma file. I mean, this is the default location. It will look inside a root folder or Prisma folder, and inside that schema dot Prisma. And I think migration is created inside a single file because we are running all these together. So it has created these tables. And there is a category to post. This is many to many table. All the other tables have been created. And we can also execute npm run generate command, which will generate the Prisma client. And then we will write first Prisma module because like if you remember the type ORM or any kind of ORM you use the repository you inject the repository inside services here we don't have a re repository here we don't have entity classes so how we are going to access we will create a one Prisma module that Prisma module will provide us the Prisma service Prisma client service that we can inject in the constructor of each and every service and you will have access to Prisma dot a model name okay so for that we need to write prisma service inside prisma we can create a new file and then just just a simple prisma client so here it is going to be injectable service and we can say export Export class Prisma service. It is going to extend Prisma client. And this is going to help us a lot because Prisma client, from the Prisma client, we can know that you are connected to the Prisma client or not. And we can also implement some lifecycle method of uh, Nest.js like implements on module init on module init and on module destroy these are lifecycle methods which we can use to initialize the connection of the prisma so here we need to override these two methods on init and on destroy I will write it then a sync on module init I was thinking if autocomplete can give me both the methods automatically or I can write them on module destroy what we are going to do here we already extending the prisma client service so we can simply say is this dot dollar this will give us if you if everything is good it should be able to give us the connection and here we can just say this dot disconnect that's it now you create a prisma module import this prisma service as a provider and make this exportable also so you can export this prisma so you can import this prisma. okay so we have created a service and then what i will do i will just create a prisma module Prisma dot module dot ts and Prisma module is nothing but it will just uh, you will just import these services. We don't have we just have a Prisma service and now this Prisma module is exporting this Prisma service and through this Prisma service we should be able to access any Prisma models. Let's say I want to access posts, user, address, tags or categories anything we can access from there okay let's see that so now we can focus on creating the apis so you can see in the src we can create our all the folders like categories post prisma which we already have so let's say we have category so you already know the the nestia structure we create controller service dao dto all the required things inside this folder 
uh, it's like very simplified folder structure we are using for now this is users categories and then we have posts these are the three schema models we have and on top of the user we also going to have authentication authentication means uh, once user is because we are going to have a login register uh, and then verifying the token so we are going to create auth guard we are going to use a password blocker strategy for protecting the routes so that only logged in user with the token can only access them <coughs> so we'll start with categories because this is a simplified here we just need to create controller and service controller.ts and then we will create one service then because we are going to write the api so it's better we create a dto also here so either you can create a folder dto and inside that you can create a category dto.ts okay so details and you can also put exceptions and all the other folders if you wanted to throw some custom exceptions which are extending the http base exception like not found authorized unauthorized all these things now coming to the service we are going to create service first service is the end and goal right so services are injectable services so I will just write one and then we will follow the same structure everywhere. This is injectable service. We can just simply say export class or export default class category service. And that's it inside a constructor we will do the dependency injection of prisma client service private read only prisma service and we will inject prisma service what does that means now we can access the prisma service inside these controller methods Okay, everything looks good now this is injectable and now we can define all the methods like get all categories get all category what we are going to do here is return this dot prisma service dot okay we have different methods so we can simply say is this dot prisma service dot which particular models you wanted to access category dot find find many because you wanted to return all and this is going to return a promise either we can create this method as async prisma promise so let's create the async and return await and similarly define all the methods you want Let's say I wanted to also create create category get category by ID. I will be passing ID as a number and Prisma service dot category dot find unique. That's the method change. Find unique and it should be where close here. ID is this if we found category so we will say if we found the category then we will return it otherwise we will return 404 not found exception then we can simply say throw a new category not found exception and we are going to create this custom exception so we can use this exception folder we have created 
what we need to do is uh, not found exception and how we can create a simple exception is we can extend we can create a simple class class category not found exception extends uh, it should extend the HTTP exception not found exception and then this is it you can actually call the constructor of the not found exception okay this is the post ID category with ID not found export default category not found exception and we can import this wherever we are using in the category service category not found exception import this otherwise if everything is good we got the category return the category that's it so we have these two methods ready uh, it is still showing warning okay one it needed uh, one argument which is post id category id so get all category now inside category service we can have update delete create category let's con convert this into create category inside create category prisma dot category dot create a simple method we have and here we just need to pass data and we are passing category that is the input parameter and category will be of type category DTO that DTO we are going to use so let's create this DTO which we are going to use inside a controller and inside a services category DTO so this is export class So DTO means like the, the attributes which you wanted to pass inside the create DTO. So we just wanted to pass only the name. So here we can use the class validator. This should not be empty, is not empty or is defined. And we just have the property name as a string. And you can also define the API properties and all if you wanted to expose these things inside Swagger. Uh, we have okay I don't have a nest yes swagger module I think that's why it is not accepting that this is the create category DTO and whenever we wanted to update then all that that DTO also we can create here only export class update category DTO just like very simple example inside update this can be optional and whenever you add optional all the other class validation becomes disabled so either you even say is string is not empty when you put is optional that means now it is optional so I just add imports so this is our update category DTO I mean we can at least make the ID as the required but uh, that is fine because ID will be the request parameter. You can pass it or not pass it, it doesn't matter. Thing not empty is optional. This is update DTO, and then we have what is it? Okay. Now we can use these. Go to category service and this is create category DTO. I mean, uh, we have covered all these kind of things a lot in the the previous examples. Wherever wherever I have covered these, now this is update category. Here we will pass. You will get the category as update category DTO. Okay, now it's update. So what we are what we are going to do in the update, we will just check first. Okay, does this really exist? I mean, you can do it two ways. Either you first check if category exists with this ID. So inside update, you will get the ID as a number, and then category. There are two ways. Either you first verify that this really exists. If category exists. Uh, Existing category, let's say 
if existing category is not there then we can throw otherwise category exist so what you can do is return await this dot prisma service dot uh, category dot it will be simple update and we just need to pass the where close we already verified that this really exists so we don't need to worry about if it is not going to be there or not where close id so this is id and then data for data it is category that's it and we are returning that so this is an update so if existing category is not null that means id exists then we can simply update it okay simply category service methods we have created now similarly we can create posts we can create users right and we can also create an authentication module authentication modules will contain okay the controllers modules and services like uh, we also wanted to implement simple login okay that we can do uh, by creating the auth controllers and modules and services so now let's uh, start with authentication we are going to create authentication controller services and all so first is auth.controller and then auth.service We are going to create a simple login register and all the these kind of system. We are going to generate a token and then we are going to access the protected API uh, protected by guard. And here we can create a DTO and inside DTO what all DTOs we have is login DTO and the register DTO. We can create a simple file also. Inside DTO login.dto.ts and then one is the register DTO because we are going to create two methods register.dto.ts starting with the login DTO it's going to be the simple right what we need is we just need an email and password and then in the register DTO we are going to have email name and password that we can put here or both the DTOs are ready. Now we can start writing our controller. And I think we forgot to create category module here because we have to bundle everything inside a module. Category dot module dot ts that we will add the code later. So controller services and then we will also create auth dot module dot ts. We will combine everything here like the providers, the controllers and everything inside the auth module. Okay, so other things we can add like the authentic JWT strategy, local authentication guard and all. So auth controller, inside auth controller, we can just simply create a ES6 class. The thing is we are creating everything from scratch. I can copy this these examples from our previously created samples so this is auth this is the controller and we can simply say export class auth controller and here we are going to use constructor and we are going to inject auth service private read only that we are going to create auth service And then we can start defining all our controller routes. Controller routes, let's say login, register, and all. Then we are also going to have a service. So go to our service. Here the annotation will change that we have imported from the Prisma service. And we have to, because now we are dependent on the Prisma module, right? So we have to import the Prisma module inside our main modules. The same we have to do inside our. Uh, category module also so let's do that here first inside category module because we are dependent on prisma service so prisma module i think we have created one and then category controller 
so what is the name here is the category controller now we will define all the methods like okay get get by id so what how we define the controllers get simply and like let's say i am trying to do is get by id then we define get category by id here we have to pass the params param is of uh, type id i mean this is the dto and it is taking find one param okay and then uh, we can simply just do is return await this dot category service dot get category by id that's it and we just need to pass the category id here we have to convert this into a sync and just import this missing so this is the get right now we can have all the methods okay get all category we don't specify id here and just change the method to get all category there is no arguments we are passing we are just saying we just change the method get all category so it's good that you create first service then controller and then module everything will get covered using this and then we have okay let's say you wanted to create a category okay so here the method will be post you can get you can get a category by id but when you wanted to post we are going to protect this route later first for now we can just see is create category because what we want is while you wanted to do a create operation you should be a logged in user okay and here we are getting the data from the body and this is a create category dto this body we can pass in the method this is create category and this dto object body we need to import this is our post method okay maybe i have changed a different method okay let's undo this i have to change this one so here we will be adding body and this is of type create category dto and in this service we are going to call create category and pass category object okay this is fine we are adding body and this is the post and then last one is the update so inside a patch or update you can create the last method and then we will create a module so this instead of create it will be update and inside we are passing two things here inside update one is the param and one is another thing is the payload body the param we can pass here so this is category update category by id so first we are getting the id okay, just remove this thing and we are good so what this find one param is doing it's nothing but it's just a simple transformer because whenever we pass the route parameter it it always accepts them as a string so it is just transforming that string to a number this is the must otherwise you have to transform it after receiving inside a controller right because these these are the primary keys of the category table which is the id auto incremented id and here also h id update by id we are doing and the method we change here is update category and it takes two argument first is the id 
you know, updating it in the different place. Sorry for that, that was not the right place. And here we are passing two arguments one is the ID, another is a category. And this is update category DTO. Everything looks good. We, you can read, you can check back here, get all, get all, get by ID, create, which is post. Here, this is update by ID. Okay, now we can create a category module. Inside category module, we are going to. So, how to create an SCS module? You can import the category controllers. I think the names are different. So, we will import all these things. This is a category controller. Then, we have category service. and uh, this is ng module we import that from common and then we are exporting this prisma module we are getting from src everything looks good now we are injecting the prisma module we are adding the prisma module in the import so that we can use the prisma service if you see the prisma module we are exporting this service so that I can use this particular service inside my Prisma inside category module. Inside category module, inside category service, we are using Prisma service because Prisma module is already added in the imported declaration of category module. Otherwise, you will see the dependency injection error here. Now, moving back to the auth controller, I can copy a little bit, a uh, couple of things from here so we can speed up things. Here it will be auth and it will be auth controller and it will be auth service here instead of category service. We are going to write the service soon. Just after this, and we have some details, we'll create them. Now, here is the first method is inside auth controller is the login, let's say. That you are trying to do the login. So let's say we have register and login, both will be the post. So we remove all the other requ non required methods. So I will just convert this into post. Okay, post is first of all the register, auth register is the route. This will become the route for us to hit from the API, and this is a sync register. And what we are getting, we are getting things inside body. Register DTO and it is of type register DTO. Okay, and then we are going to write auth service auth service dot register. And we'll just pass this data. Now this service will decide what needs to be done. And another API we have important one is the login. Inside login we are going to do a couple of things. So this is login. Inside login also we are going to receive the data inside a body. And then auth service dot login let's say this is the kind of method we are doing. Okay, now we are going to use the passport strategy, I mean GWT strategy, local authentication strategy, and then we are also going to add a guards. Okay, so let's do this from the register. Register will be the open API. There will be nothing. The objective of register is to create the data inside database. So first let's create a auth service here and we'll copy the category service. Auth service uh, inside auth service, and here we can injectable. This is uh, auth service, remove all the other non required things, remove the non required imports. So, this is our auth service. 
Now inside auth service, what we are going to do for the register? First, we will define the register method. So this will be public async register. And what we are getting in the payload, we are getting the register data. Data is of type register DTO that you can import here register DTO and then here we will start okay we already have the validations through the DTO we will add a validation pipe D validation is not happening until unless you don't add a validation pipe at the controller level so we will just use hashed password we are using await bcrypt okay this module we have to import that's not there because we are doing registration and here we are going to create a hash version of the password so bcrypt this will generate the password for us this is data dot password now we have the password we can just do try catch i mean you can also wrap this inside a try catch if anything goes wrong here okay now after the password we can just do a create user const create user const created user because user creation is simple what we need to do await this dot prisma service dot user uh, dot create sorry this is create method and inside create we need to pass the payload and here you can see inside the data so here we have a registration data okay we have a data and then we can just override the password value to this hashed password see what happens is not assignable to type could I just do dot 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 so create generally takes data as an argument you can see the data and then we override the definition so if let's say I wanted to create a data like this I, I either I can spread all these properties or I can just directly assign or I can create a payload I mean it should work but let's see password this is the payload I have I have constructed that and I can just pass this payload in the data password email is not assignable to what is error address is missing in the type password but required in the types okay so what so we have to make this relationship optional here because inside auth service this is not allowing us to create user what it is saying is property address is missing in type right okay it is saying that address is required in our schema so what we can do is let's go to our schema we can put address id also optional and inside address entity we already a user is already optional so what we can do is we can generate again npm run generate i think there is no any error or warning this time it should work address id which is integer optional if this relationship is optional Okay, and then we will check the Prisma client. Non modules. And here is our Prisma client, and you can see address ID is null or number. Now it should allow us to create a user without address. Uh, here we are inside our service. It works, right? Now it is accepting this. 
and we are able to create a user without address so we are inside authentication service and this is the register method so once the, the user is created successfully so this is the created user we can just return the created user by setting up the password empty created user password empty and then we can return that user and inside error let's say if you are not able to create a user then there are two possible cause because if you see in the side of prisma schema prisma the email is unique so what you can do is either you can validate okay email there is no user exist with this email so this is always a good approach that either you can create a because we are already in service method so we can just check public async check user we just pass the email check user exists this is the the right way because here you will find if this user exists or not and we can do the same logic what we are doing here is we are going to just check if the user exists so user dot find unique and this is the where close email okay and if we are able to find the user if there is a user object if user object is null check user exists return false otherwise return true something like that this we can use if user exists if user is null that means user doesn't exist return false otherwise return true and the same logic we can use here because email is unique this dot check user exist and data dot email before even creating the, that user and then if we can do is if user exists is going to return false that is a favorable condition for us so we will just put a negation here user does not exist then only we are doing all these things if user exist then we can just put some exception inside else block so new http uh, there is a conflict exception we can also throw I and mean, you can customize these exceptions user already exists with same email or unprocessable entity 244 whatever you want it will return to 409 okay this is the one thing and even if like if there is any internal exception occurred then we cannot do anything we will just throw an exception with the internal server error or we can just say is internal server exception occurred that's it it will customize the message automatically because we are using http based exception and it is being thrown from the service so it will go to the controller and controller will directly throw or to the ui okay so this is our register method now we can think about how we are going to do with the login so login will go to the controller the login will be a little different because registry is open api in the login we have to first check the user and all these things so this is going to return HTTP code also you can define this you can define on all the controllers HTTP code 200 and this is the post is login and here we are getting uh, the login data So let's say if I wanted to use a request response object, right? So you can also use request. Request with user because we are getting the user and then there is a response. 
because once user is logged in we are going to send cookies in the response so that's why i'm using response instead of returning directly things from here input request response this request is of type request with user so it's like we are, we have created a custom we have to create a custom interface we can put this here request with user it is extending the request and this is the user object user type we are getting from the prisma client okay because now what we want is once user do the login we want to bind the user object inside a request object so request with user is all be there why it is complaining sometimes okay this request is coming from express that's we can import simple ns cs login register we are writing okay and then this is what we have is we have couple of things inside a controller we are getting the request object from request object we can get the user now you might be thinking why i'm not writing it as a straight forward right why am i updating this why i'm not using just a simple dto and all because we are going to use guard here that guard will verify if user is logged in if user is i mean you have passed the valid credentials if everything is valid it will even capture the user and it will populate the logged in user inside request.user so we are going to create a guard for that and we got the user and then if everything goes fine here we will do tbd to be done and everything is go good then we can just simply say response dot send uh body to be used so here we are creating the response object response dot send this response is of type express And then we can simply say is response dot send the user the logged in user okay so here we need to calculate this user object and how we are getting this is not the, the email password what we are going to do is we are going to use this guard this guard will extract uh, the request object will validate the login and all so here login authentication guard we are going to create it's all about we are going to fill this authentication with all the auth strategy and all so that i already have i mean instead of writing all those things so this is the local local authentication guard it is extending the auth guard local okay and this is the request with user interface this is the token payload right which are just going to populate user id inside a token okay <coughs> now going back to our controller auth controller here we can import this guard so this local authentication guard will use this uh, local strategy of passport right we are going to use auth guard here here it is using auth guard from the passport right so we have to define the jwt strategy and the local strategy so that also i can i can i can explain all those things all the three things we are going to import inside authentication because i am copying this from my previous example which i have created for authentication so this is the important part jwt strategy this is actually extracting the token and all these things and then first of all let's take a look on authentication so this is the local strategy this is the important part what it is doing is this is being used for our login mechanism so our local authentication guard is using that auth guard and this is the local strategy and what we are doing in the local strategy is we are saying that okay username field is email 
what you need to see is what you need to do is through some service you just need to validate okay this user really exist with this email or password or not that's it right and what you need to do is you can create a user service here simple user service dot ts and inside user service we can just say okay uh, this is the password and this is the email does this user really exist so we are going to define the authentication method here so this is the local strategy we are going to write authentication service so let's create this inside auth service only inside auth service we will just define the method verify user get authenticated user local strategy get authenticated user this we are going to create inside auth service so here we can say public async get authenticated user here we are going to have two arguments email as a string and the password then we can just put a try catch wrapper we can do all our stuff here inside the try catch just to validate if user really exist okay inside try catch first we will just check const user if user really exist this dot and here we can use either the same service or let's say we, i have a user service because we are going to write some user controller also and here I can just do is get by email. I will pass the email. And then await this dot verify password. And I will, I'm just passing two things here: the the plain text password and the user password. And if everything is good we will just return the user right so we are going to use user service here inside user service i can define this method get by email that will do our stuff like inside user service we can simply create one method get by email and we have already done this many times here is my user service injectable because i wanted to just isolate things export class user service and here inside a constructor i can inject the uh, prisma service prisma service and here i can define this methods get by email user not found exception i will just simply say is not found exception okay so we are using user service and i will create a module also here which is because we have to use this user service inside authentication module so user dot module dot ts inside user module what you will do is you will just use the same stuff which we have created inside category module instead of creating this we can copy a couple of things from here category module and then here it is our user service we are still dependent on the prisma module here we can just say i have a user service and then we can just export this user module providers and here i need to define exports okay i'm also exporting this user service so that someone else can use it and i can just inject this user module inside authentication module and here is auth module we have to define the auth module here so i will copy the category module and then we will run this application whatever we have created till now so we are dependent on the user module sorry prisma module and the user module 
we are going to create authentication controller and then there is a auth service and user module we have to import so let's see how it goes let's import the user module that's it uh, so we have everything now now you can access the user service inside this uh, authentication service so coming back to our auth service this user service we have to inject first on the top this is how the dependency injection works private read only user service and import the user service here and then we can start accessing the user service and you can see we got the one method get by email now we just need to write our verify password method so verify password method is in the same it's just using bcrypt compare right uh, we can define this private async verify password give me two passwords to compare first is the plain text password and another is a encrypted password okay we got the both the strings and then we i mean how we compare is we can just return uh, is password equal and we can simply say is await bcrypt do we have it here bcrypt dot compare and we just pass both the password plain text password and hashed password which is just a password for us and if password is matching is password equal if this is false then what we will say is so new http let's say http we can just return a custom exception here because we need to send a message also we can say is uh, wrong email password provided and http exception http status uh, what is the status dot bad request we can say okay let's format our code a little bit and then we will revisit this yes so now this looks little straight now what we are doing register and then get authenticated user this we are getting called from our authentication strategy local strategy we already have authentication service here that is auth service so we will just import this here ok authentication service has the get authenticated user method now what it is doing local strategy is actually saying that ok inside a payload there is an email attribute get that pass that email attribute here ok and once you have the both the payload we just validate that email and password here so this is responsible for returning the user object and the same user object we will go to the controller back and it is attaching that user object to the request and we are getting that user object here now what we need to do is if we are able to get the user object that means you are successfully logged in we will create a token we will send you a token in the cookies or we will return you the token directly